Hello, my friends, and welcome to a new episode of Ordnance Lab. Ha ha ha! Oh man, I love using the Russian accent. But welcome to another episode here at Ordnance Lab. I'm Jake, the mad scientist, and Wish.com Jim Carrey is behind the camera. So you can say hello to him later when he shows up on the video. But today, this video came about from multiple comments and requests through our social media outlets um, on Facebook, on, on Reddit, uh, and also uh, through the comments in, on, on YouTube, which we do appreciate. It helps us uh, get more feedback on the videos, the constructive ones anyway. Some of them are just ridiculous, and a lot of it is just mindless bickering, but it's quite entertaining to read them all. But somebody asked Cody compare the force of an M80, the legit M80, not the one that you buy at fireworks stands here in the United States. Those are actually not actual M80s. They have a small amount of flash powder. So we went back and said, yeah, absolutely. Because I used to make flash or er, uh, fireworks all the time as a kid, but not traditional flash powder fireworks. I made them out of fulminated mercury, which I do not recommend. Fulminated mercury is a really dangerous explosive. And there's a reason why I don't like making it anymore because I made a ton of them uh, when I was a kid. And I store a ton of them at my parents' house. And then later when I went back to deal with them, one of them went off on me prematurely and landed a huge chunk of wood in my torso. It was not a pleasant experience. So we don't make fulminated mercury one anymore, but we did make a ton of flash powder. So we went and looked up all the literature and discovered what roughly what a clone correct M80 is. And well, we made one. So here is the clone correct M80. It has 3.5 grams of flash powder in it, and we put a really long fuse. Sometimes you'd see them with really short fuses. I don't want to light one with a short fuse. That's a good way to lose some fingers or worse. And these were used for artillery simulation. So to give you an idea of how loud this thing is, if you ever, if you guys have ever set off a flashbang, and we're going to work on a video where we're demonstrating the powers of the flashbang, these things have five grams of flash powder, <clears throat> and they have a lot of oomph too. I mean, if you throw this off in a build, inside a room, it is very disorienting and can cause some serious nausea. And then we also cloned the cherry bomb. So this was my father's favorite uh, explosive device. He, he used to buy them all the time when he was a kid, back when you could buy them, back in the 50s and 60s. My dad used to do some serious damage back in rural Indiana where, you know, like there was nothing else to do up back there except uh, watch tornadoes, grow corn, and set off uh, cherry bombs. So I did a lot of research on these too. I couldn't find a lot of any standardization on the cherry bomb on how much flash powder. Uh, I'm not a pyrotechnician, um, so I didn't put a lot of effort into finding out more than, you know, it's, we figured about, say, we'll go with five grams of flash powder in the cherry bomb. So this will have as much force as the flashbang and a little bit more than the M80. As well as we made the quarter stick. Uh, we used the leftover flash powder to make one, a couple quarter sticks and we'll set one off too. We didn't bring one here uh, today, but we have one down uh, when we go to the range. All right. And it's really important that we make this because I know uh, somebody asked a request to do a, uh, a uh, bottle cap mine from the Fallout series. And well, if I remember right from, I forgot which, is, which fall, I think it was Fallout 4, when you make one, it requires several cherry bombs. So we now have a ton of these that we can now proceed to cloning the uh, lunch or the bottle cap mine. So that's coming up soon. Now, the legality of things. These things, actually I discovered, I didn't realize this, are controlled items through an explosive licensing. So we can make them because we're licensed explosive manufacturers, but we can't sell them to the public. Uh, the whole legality thing though is best des uh, described by Sean. So let's cut to the range and have Sean discuss the legalities of the forbidden fireworks. All right, so, well, first of all, let's make sure that's clear. Not a legal expert, not a lawyer. None of this is legal advice. If you follow this, you'll probably end up dead and or in jail. So make sure that you don't make fireworks on your own. But on my purely speculative knowledge, um, is here we have what is a called a consumer firework. And then here is the fireworks that Jake made, a legit M80. What happened is the difference is, is that the Consumer Product Safety Commission, total party poopers, came along back in the 60s and said, hey, all these morons are getting their hands blown off by M80s and cherry bombs and legit firecrackers like that. We have to protect people from doing dumb things. So what they did is they came in and defined what consumer fireworks are. And basically it has to be something with a just an extremely small amount of uh, explosive materials in it. What that does, it allows you to, to sell that to people that do not have a federal explosives license. On the other hand, illegal fireworks, there really isn't an illegal firework as long as it's controlled as explosive materials. So like this right here, we're making this underneath our explosives license and we could, if we wanted to sell it to other people that had a federal explosives license. However, we could not sell it as like consumer grade fireworks. But there are some folks out there that sell illegal fireworks. And the reason they're illegal is because, well, they're probably not licensed 
license and also it's probably larger than uh, is allowed under the Consumer Product Safety Commission's definition of consumer fireworks. So whenever you go out there and buy it from Billy Bob, who's missing a couple of teeth and he's doing it in his back of his trailer, eh, you know, use caution that can have Darwinian consequences. So let's get on to blowing stuff up. So we're out here at the Renaissance Shooting Club in Todd Mission, Texas, and we're going to be setting this off. They were really nice uh, to let us uh, do this because normally a lot of ranges, they're not okay with it. Um, but we're not going to tear it up because we're not throwing fragmentation everywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to first test out the M80. And this is the clone correct M80, which has approximately 3.5 grams of flash powder. It's a lot of flash powder. To give you an example, a flashbang has about 5 grams of flash powder. So it's, it's up there with, uh, with uh, it's going to have a lot of report. But um, it's, all, uh, it's all bark and no, uh, no bite. There's no fragmentation to this. It's just a cardboard hull. And then we have a decent sized fuse on here of about 20 seconds so that I can light it and get away without harming myself because I'm not trying to lose my hands. And we're going to put it on a witness plate to show what it could do. And then we're going to compare it and we'll have a couple pumpkins we have because, hey, you know, it's, it's October and there's a ton of pumpkins. We'll use that as a reference to see what it can do. So let's light this thing off and see what happens. The M80 was incredibly loud, but didn't really damage the wood block we used as the witness plate. Next is the infamous Cherry Bomb. This is more powerful than the M80, as it has significantly more flash powder. We placed it on the block roughly in the same location as the M80, lit the fuse, and then got back. The M80 was loud, but the cherry bomb made it sound like a party popper. It also split the witness block in half, a testament to how powerful they can be. Next is the quarter stick, which is the most powerful of the three. We pieced together the block and then placed on top the quarter stick. The quarter stick exploded with enough force to generate a fragmentation pattern onto the block. It also created an explosive impression into the wood. The block was also broken up into several new pieces. To get an idea of what kind of damage these fireworks can do, we're going to test them out against some pumpkins. First up is the M80 stuffed inside one. As you can see, not much is left of the pumpkin. This is why you never want to hold on to one of these while the fuse is lit. Next is the cherry bomb against this mutated herpes pumpkin. Let's see what a bigger charge can do. The cherry bomb turned the pumpkin into puree in no time at all. A much faster way to make pumpkin pie filling. The block was also totally annihilated. The blast radius was quite impressive for such a small firecracker. The last blast is the quarter stick. With a larger charge, very little should be left of the pumpkin. Unfortunately, the quarter stick had an incomplete explosion. Texas humidity is very unforgiving and has caused a ton of issues before with a lot of other projects. This one fell victim to it most likely. Looks like it's back to the drawing board. All right, well, hopefully you all found that entertaining um, and informative. Uh, hopefully that clears up why there's some like illegal fireworks that are out there while we're able to sit here and make them as explosive materials. You can see actually how much explosive force they have with them. Um, it blew the ever-living hell out of the smaller one and um, the cherry bomb with that funny looking pumpkin that had herpes or whatever um, scattered that everywhere. Unfortunately with the larger one, we ran into an issue. Jake's pretty sure that it's due to the humidity where we actually fabricate stuff. We're here in Southeast Texas Texas where it's like 90 something percent humidity all of the time so we need to do a better control mechanism uh, for that but we like to show y'all the unvarnished thing of like hey sometimes it goes great sometimes it doesn't go so well and we're gonna try to improve so a big thanks to Sportsman's Guide for making this right here possible um, really appreciate their support there'll be a link in the comments section for you to be able to um, go in there and get stuff from them that'll go about supporting us please remember us on patreon Bitcoin Litecoin as I've said before anything except for controlled substances or conflict diamonds we are happy to accept for um, to support us anyways again hope you all enjoyed this and make sure not to do this at home and we'll see y'all next time 
But wait, there's more. We got a, another firecracker here we're gonna set off because we had a dud with those ones in the uh, pumpkins there. Unfortunately, the moisture got to it, but we have this toilet that we've had here forever that Cody, Cody that didn't make it out here this trip, unfortunately. But we're gonna go ahead and dispose of this toilet for him that we've had sitting out here for a while. We'll throw this in here. This has got about 40 grams of flash powder. That's about five times as much as a flash bang has in it. So it's gonna be a hell of a bang. Let's make it happen. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want to see more, and stay tuned for another episode here at Ordnance Lab.